Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in to Outdoor and Door Texan. Today I'm going to show you how I make wild pig breakfast sausage at home. I'm going to walk y'all through each step of the process as well as pointing out any helpful tips I've learned along the way. So when it's your turn to get started, you'll be a pro. First up, you're going to need wild pig meat. Texas, and unfortunately most of the U.S. these days, is overrun with these rude dudes. So get outside and shoot some groceries. I'm working with two pounds of meat that mostly came from the hind quarters, but you can use just about any cut as long as you've carefully processed your animal. Remove all glands, connective tissue, and silver skin, and then cut everything into manageable small cubes. Also, it's important to point out that these cubes are almost fully frozen. When grinding meat, you want everything as cold as possible. Meat grinders create a great deal of friction, which equals heat, which melts fat and then gums up the works. Chill everything before you start and repeat throughout the process if necessary. After prepping your meat, you'll want to add fat. Wild pig meat is typically much leaner than their farm-raised cousins, so I make sure to add bacon ends and pieces to my breakfast sausage. This is essentially offcuts from bacon making that are too fatty to package and sell as regular bacon, but they're perfect for adding fat to a grind. If you can't find this in your store, you can always ask the butcher for back fat that they should have on hand as well. For this recipe, I'm mixing two pounds of bacon pieces to my two pounds of wild pig, which is a heart-healthy 50-50 blend. Depending on taste and the opinion of your cardiologist, you're welcome to mess around with other ratios. But in my opinion, I've found that half and half is the golden ratio for breakfast sausage. Now onto the grinder. I'm using a Kino meat grinder, which attaches to my KitchenAid stand mixer. Amazon sells a number of these meat grinder attachment kits under various names, but they all appear to have the same components. They're relatively cheap, come with everything you need to grind meat as well as stuffed sausage, and after using this one for a number of years now, I've had zero complaints. I'll make sure to leave the link to my Amazon store where you can find this attachment as well as all the other tools I swear by when processing wild game. And if you don't have this particular brand attachment, or a stand mixer for that matter, don't change the channel just yet. I'm still walking through the general steps you need to follow in order to make breakfast sausage, regardless of what type of grinder you're working with. Just like the meat and fat, you'll want to stick the grinder parts in your freezer for about 30 minutes or longer. Again, cold is your friend when grinding. The grind will come out cleaner and everything will run much smoother if you keep everything chilled. Assembling the attachment is thankfully pretty simple. Insert your auger into the tube, add the four-sided blade facing out, Attach the coarse grinder plate for your first pass, and then screw down the ring so everything's secure. Be careful not to over-tighten the ring, as that will sometimes prevent the auger from turning inside. And yeah, that's about it. Now to attach the grinder, take off that front plate from your stand mixer, then insert the attachment and make sure that the auger clicks into the back hole securely. Then simply tighten that side nut, locking everything into place. Finally, turn on your stand mixer and get everything a quick quality check and barring any screeching metal or fires, you should be all set to start grinding. Now the actual grinding stage is pretty self-explanatory. Toss in one to two cubes of meat, add a little bacon, and keep interchanging until you run out of stuff to grind. Make sure to use your plunger to feed the meat and fat directly into the auger, and never, ever, ever put your fingers down that hole. Once you're done with grind number one, you should have a big pile of coarsely ground meat. And before we run it through for another pass, this time using the medium grind plate, we need to add some ingredients that'll make this pile of meat taste like breakfast sausage. Start out by adding two teaspoons of kosher salt, two teaspoons of black pepper, two tablespoons of sage, one teaspoon of crushed red pepper, one tablespoon of brown sugar, two tablespoons of thyme, and finally, two teaspoons of garlic powder. Now dive in and hand fold the spices into your meat until your hands are just about half frozen. It doesn't have to be perfectly mixed since our next step is more grinding, but it helps to give it a head start so that they're not all stuck in one section. And it's back to grinding, but this time we'll be using the medium grind plate, which will give us our desired sausage patty texture when done. Same as before, just feed everything through the grinder until all the meat has had a second pass. Again, make sure all your grinder parts and the meat are still plenty cold. There's nothing wrong with taking a break while you toss everything back in the freezer for a quick chill down. We're all done with grinding, but before we call this finished, there's one last crucial step. Make a teeny tiny sausage patty and toss it on your skillet. Welcome to Outdoor Indoor Texans Tiny Cooking. Now, this is an extremely vital and often overlooked step. Cook your mini patty like you would any other breakfast sausage patty and take it off once it hits an internal temp of 160 degrees Fahrenheit. This is your chance to taste test and tweak. Does it need more salt? Does it need more herb flavor? Would you prefer it to be spicier? Make your changes, suit your preferences, and then save my comment section from needless complaints about flavors you could have fixed yourself. 
I'm a big proponent of people playing around with recipes. So find what works for you and then feel free to leave a comment below on how you made it your own. For me, this is exactly how I like it, which makes sense <laughs> because y'all are following my recipe. That'll do it for this one. And thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or tips of your own to add, please feel free to leave a comment below. I always try to make myself available to my viewers and I'll be happy to tackle whatever comments pop up. Now, if you're new to the channel, I would greatly appreciate if you consider hitting that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. It certainly helps keep me going and you'll have access to countless recipes with more great content to come. All right, y'all take care.